I find this to be a funny question because, yeah, this is embarrassing. No one is gonna hand it to you. If I dump this whole bag, I'm gonna cry. I don't even know if this is a tablespoon. I am overly excited because I just ordered the Christmas gifts for my siblings. And I love giving presents to people. I'm just excited. I need to make cookies today because I would like to be baking something while I answer the questions I have collected from you all. I'm thinking about doing butter pecan thins. I have to kind of motivate myself to go get supplies for said cookies though. We have tons of nuts in this house, but not the ones that I need. Do I want to get up and do it though? I don't know. Probably should, otherwise I'm just gonna sit here. Let's just do it. Let's figure out the list of supplies. This recipe thing lets you double or triple the recipe, but nowhere does it say how many cookies it makes. So how do I know if I want to double it? I'm gonna take a picture of this recipe. I think we're just gonna do double. I don't want to be making a recipe and I end up with only like 20 cookies. That's a sham. Okay, it says I need Ugh. I just want to see the dang recipe. Two eggs. How the heck are we on a... There's one in there, a few in there. Technically, I have enough eggs. Butter. Okay, they put the label on this thing wrong. I think it's half a cup though. And this says I need a cup and a half. Oh wait, I found more. Oh, there's a big boy. I'm just guessing that this is like close to a cup. It looks like a cup. Technically, I have enough butter. I'm gonna leave it out so it's soft. Okay, I have baking powder. I don't see vanilla anywhere. Vanilla. Extract. Finely chopped. I am an absolute weirdo that needed to print out your guys' questions because I don't like looking at my phone. It's confusing. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Cold, cold. Let me back up a little bit so that the sun can warm up our icy windshield. I am notoriously bad at letting a vehicle warm up. I know it's important, and I'm trying to be better at it. It's not my specialty, but this thing sounds like a monster truck if you don't warm it, so. Okay, I'll do a question before I go. How do you choose the subjects of your paintings? What inspires you? Well, I choose subjects of my paintings based a lot on scenes from my everyday life that kind of strike me as being beyond the ordinary, despite it being very much ordinary. It's just these little moments of awe that I get while I'm out doing stuff. Spaces that pull me out of myself. How cute is that? Wrapping paper, supplies. Do I have an art process I repeat step by step? Yes, but it does change depending on the piece. If I'm doing a smaller piece or a plein air piece, it's going to look a little bit different. For a larger studio piece, I have a very methodical process and I'm spending a lot of time on each step of it. That just helps with the outcome that I'm looking for. A smaller piece, something experimental or plein air, I have a little bit of a different way of setting it up. It's a bit more in the moment. The next question was, do you script or plan your videos? I absolutely do not script them. I think it would help a lot with me speaking more clearly and not rambling, but I just lose interest if I am scripting it and then filming it. It's like I've heard the same thing too many times. On the other hand, when I do a voiceover, I will spend a little bit of time before recording it to write it out, uh, just because I prefer voiceovers that have a good bit of content to them or purpose. When you hear voiceover, it has this narrator kind of essence to it and that for me deserves a little bit more thought out scripting, I guess. If 
For my type of videos, I don't really need to plan. I will kind of think about it in terms of scheduling, like what section of my painting am I going to finish over the next couple of weeks and I'll kind of build that into a storyline as I'm talking about it and sharing that experience with you. I don't want it to feel super chaotic. Okay, how do you choose a palette or is it the same for every piece? If so, what pigments are on your palette every time and what kind of paint? I primarily use Utrecht paint. I might pull out a special color if there's something in the piece that is really standing out or more saturated. There's a lot of colors I'll use all the time. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Cad Yellow Medium. I also use gray and a lot of people will tell you that that is a no-go and you should mix your grays. And I do, but sometimes when you, you need to bring saturation layers down a lot, it helps me. I need to eat first or I will be a hangry little mess making cookies, so let's get some of this out of the way. I can eat. I need some sugar. And to answer the question, how do I see myself as an artist compared to my art? Well, I gave it a little bit of thought. And I like to think that as the artist, I am the input and the art is the output. The better and more interesting and authentic my experiences are, you know, that's gonna show up in the work. So it's kind of a partnership that I have with what I make. My art does its job of being lovely, special, time-consuming, and well-made, as long as I do the part of enriching myself to make something worthwhile. It goes hand in hand. The next question was, what are my goals for my YouTube channel next year and for my art? I try to make my YouTube goals be things that I can actually control. I've never really set goals that were based on number of subscribers or views or things. I definitely have a little bit of expectation around that, but I don't depend on it or set my milestones that way. I try to think of my goals for YouTube around the content itself generally, finding the best ways to make it unique, fit my personality, be something enjoyable to watch. Every week I'm setting new small goals of how I want the content to feel, and then I just work on that as I go along. But overarching, like longer term goals for next year, I'd like to go back to making a weekly video, but it's kind of time consuming, especially when art making is my priority. That would only happen if I found a different type of format that was simpler to make. And then art goals. I tend to set a goal for how many studio paintings I want to make. I never reach it, but it helps to <laughs> set my sights high. I think I want to do more exhibitions. That was really fun this year, competing. It's a good little confidence boost and I get exposed to more of what's going on. Okay, I got hot. I get hot very easily. I don't know why, but butter smells so delicious. Let's call that a tablespoon and a half. I think that totals to a cup of butter. I need a cup and a half, so I need to figure out how much half a cup of this is. There's a quarter-ish. Now we need one more quarter. I'm pretty sure it's all the butter I have. A little more. A little more. Okay, let's call that good. This one is kind of related to the last one. How did you get into so many competitions and what did you end up winning? Maybe outline the process application or finding the events. I have only been entering juried exhibitions since March, but I've enjoyed it greatly, so I'm happy to answer. I have found the competitions either locally through my art teacher or online. It's very simple actually to do a Google search or look at lists that already exist with opportunities available. Artwork Archive always has some good options. I look through those and it's worth putting the time into to find that stuff. No one is gonna hand it to you. 
and it gives you a lot of great experiences. I won a student show and it was $400 for the prize. I've also gotten kind of like a second place from another one and you don't win anything. So it depends on the competition. I've also gotten a gallery award. I think that was like $250. It just depends on where you're showing, but I will say it's not always about the award. If you can get your artwork in front of the right people, it opens up opportunities in the future. I have had one curator for a gallery mention now that I was in a show there, that if I ever have a body of work finished and ready to be shown, to let her know. And that comes from putting my work out there. So I'm just slowly getting into that. I don't try and rush the process. I find opportunities that make sense for me and my style of work. It doesn't make sense to enter competitions with a theme that doesn't fit what I'm doing or won't have the audience that's interested in my style. So I don't know. You have to do a little bit of research. Your artwork won't get in if it's not what they're looking for and you can't really control that. You can kind of expect it and look for good opportunities, but don't fret if you get rejected. It really has nothing to do with the quality of your work. Same with awards. A lot of these are judged by other artists or maybe someone that critiques art. So it's subjective. It just comes down to their opinion. You can even look for shows that will have a judge who you think might enjoy your work and seek out an opportunity like that. It's okay to find where you fit into the puzzle piece and present yourself there. It's actually what you want to do. Go where you are valued. I'm getting so distracted. I need a cup of sugar. Applications are pretty simple. You just need good quality images of your work because most of the time it's a digital application in the beginning and then you might bring in pieces for like a secondary look at it. Guys, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to get my sugar in here. Okay, that's enough. I've already made like a giant mess. I think I was supposed to put both sugars in, which means I need a cup of light brown sugar. Oh yeah, applications are simple. Have a good photo, have your artwork finished. Framed is preferred usually, or just clean edges at least. You'll have to fill out what size it is, the title of your piece, uh, the medium, and a lot of times you'll have to write a artist statement. <laughs> is stressing me out. Nobody said I was good at this. If I dump this whole bag, I'm gonna cry. Close, very close. It's just sugar. You can't really put in too little or too much in my opinion. For the artist statement, I would say write a few, edit it, ask for feedback from somebody else, three, four sentences, five at the most. As long as it's honestly written and it has some correlation with the piece you've actually shown them, I think you're fine. Usually there's a fee. Sometimes you only have to pay the fee if you become a finalist. It's almost always under $40-ish, depending on how many pieces you enter. If someone's asking you for like a lot more money than that, it's a scam. Mix with a hand mixer until light and fluffy. I don't have a hand mixer. I'll just keep stirring it for a while and see what happens. Add in the egg vanilla mixing well, be sure to scrape the sides and bottom. I'm making progress. I'm going to keep mixing though because I'm clearly not as good as a hand mixer. Deborah asked, where did you learn the skills to analyze your own work and ideas or the work of other artists to get the most out of it? I am naturally an analytical person. I like to dig deep into what I'm seeing and make connections, but I also did that a lot in design slash art school. So I have practice. You critique your own work and other people's work there, and they also teach you kind of what to look for in a piece, context, symbolism, composition. So I have the language already to, to do that and to see that. 
Even if you don't have experience in it or know a lot about analyzing artwork, you can still do it. Take the time to look at some pieces you like and just write about them. Write about what you see, what they make you feel, why they make you feel that way. Do a little bit of history research on those pieces. There, you have analyzed it. Even if you don't know the technical terms, you don't have to do it like anybody else. Do you have a sketchbook where you draw some random stuff just for fun, not necessarily for future paintings? I have lots of sketchbooks, but they don't have uh, random stuff just for fun. I find that planning out my paintings is fun. I like to experiment with different compositions there, but it's all for the greater intention of being used in a painting. So, I don't know, that's the way I am. I think this is light and fluffy. I'm gonna get spatula to clean up the edges. Okay, oh, spatula, I'm so distracted. I'm actually quite the chaotic person, can't help it. That's probably why I have to work so hard to plan my pieces because if I don't, it's just a scribbling mess and I don't even like it. So if I don't like it, I don't think that's the way I should be working. But naturally, especially when I'm baking, things are a mess, probably because I don't know how to do it and I'm just not good at it. Let's add in the eggs. Yeah, this is embarrassing. Time for some vanilla. The next question was, do you ever paint emotionally and forget about technique, light, and other rules? Do you skip like planning or sketching and just improvise? I find this to be a funny question because painting with technique does not mean you're skipping over emotion. Actually, painting with technique helps you to show the emotion that you want to. So whenever I'm painting, I am always going to think a little bit about lighting and rules because that brings me joy. I want that outcome to speak clearly to why I'm making it. It's not just the applying paint to the canvas. I mean, that creates a sense of flow and is enjoyable, but the satisfaction for me comes from an end result that I love. Uh, but the question also said, like, do you improvise? I improvise when I do other things. I like creating stuff outside of art. I actually like to sew. I like to make gifts, play with kids. I like games. I improvise in those ways. I don't do it in my art. A more playful, emotional way of being happens to me in other areas of my life. And I'm happy with that. Sometimes I admit a bit of jealousy to artists that are more spontaneous and free-flowing. All right, let's add our flour, baking powder, and salt. So that's two pinches of salt. Let's do that first. One pinch, two pinch. Baking powder, how much? One teaspoon of baking powder. And then flour, two cups and four tablespoons. I don't even know if this is a tablespoon. It looks close to a tablespoon. So we're just running with it. I don't even know what the point of me leveling it is because I'm already probably so far off with these measurements. Okay, let's get this out of my sight. Next question. Did you go to art school? If so, what school did you go to? I did go to art school. I went to the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design because it was the closest art school to my hometown. I think it's still like two hours away, but that was pretty good for me. What inspired you to become an artist? The real kicker was me being in a full-time corporate job and absolutely hating it and realizing that I made a terrible decision and wanted to change that so that I woke up excited for every day. I think that inspired me to go back to making art and pursuing this with a lot of intent and focus so that I can have a long-term career in it. I'm not trying to race into anything. I'm inspired to wake up every day and love what I do. So that's the, the goal always. 
Which goes along with the next question, asking how did you start as an artist? I started by saving up a little bit of a nest egg so that I could quit my job and still pay for the apartment I lived in at the time while pursuing art and figuring out the direction I wanted. Started making more art, teaching myself a lot. I moved into a situation where I don't need as much money and I continued to make art. And now I'm starting to share it with you guys and slowly building uh, the career that I would like to have. Add chopped nuts, fold into the dough. Let's crack open these nuts. Pretty sure I only need one cup. Okay, and fold that in. Gently, I'm assuming I will be somewhat gentle. I can do that. Next question. How is video making and editing affecting your practice and overall day-to-day -day life? How do you feel after 30 videos on here? Just a little insight on how this experience feels to you personally. It affects my practice a lot, actually. And I think that if I didn't enjoy it and I didn't find satisfaction in it, I would not be doing it because it does take a lot of time out of my week that I could be creating. But on the other hand, I think it balances out my practice for me. When I'm kind of stuck in a painting for a long time, I can step away and focus on something else. In a way, my video editing helps me to reflect on my process a lot. So I can come into my work with more insight, more patience, all those things that like a good friend would tell you to do when you're struggling. I get that from myself by slowing down, watching what I did the last two weeks, reflecting on it, turning it into a positive story, it refreshes me for the next part of my painting. And it also gives me like a cycl cyclical pattern to work in, which I appreciate. I like a good routine. I find that I didn't have a lot of content to watch that had very skilled and interesting artists to me, along with the reality of daily life. And I just got kind of <laughs> sad watching content with good artists thinking like I'm not making enough I'm not constantly in my studio it didn't actually inspire me so I thought heck I should make the thing that I am looking for let's try and get a couple of these in here before my camera dies I think I'm just supposed to do like a, a tablespoon like that I don't have a real scoop so the dough doesn't come out very easily but I'm gonna make my little balls plop them on there Call it a day. There is a reason I don't have a baking channel. Let's just, let's be real. Also, how do I feel after 30 videos? I feel fantastic. When I set out to start a YouTube channel, do you know what my main vision was? Like my goal for this whole thing? It was to have that channel page with an actual collection of videos that I can go back through and be like, man, that's how I made my artwork then and this is how I make it now. Like, I love the journey of things, the process. I wanted to see like a body of work. I hope that's what's fascinating to me. Okay, cookies, the first batch are in the oven. But in the meantime, let's answer a couple more questions. How do you motivate, push yourself to create and finish painting every week? I don't. I do it for a season. In the summer, during the plein air class, I made at least a painting every week. But those are for short periods of time. I don't think I could keep up with that. In general though, to stay motivated, I paint what I like. I set up a routine that makes sense to me. I also am not always motivated. There are days when it's hard to do stuff or when a phase of a piece is kind of dragging out. This YouTube channel helps me stay accountable with myself. Having a teacher or some external source to like act as feedback worked really well for me to maintain my schedule and keep showing up day to day. I think you need intrinsic motivation and you need an outside source to kind of, you know, foster you along. Oh, those look terrible. They're not looking so hot. I wanted these to be crispy cookies and they're still white as snow, so I'm gonna give it another five minutes, see what happens. Also, those the competitions that I do, that helps motivate me to keep making work.
work that I think is next level from the last piece because I want to improve, do well, and all that jazz. It's normal to want to be validated for good work. You have to boost your confidence a little bit so that making what you make is exciting. If you haven't had any positive feedback, you're just trying to do it from the inside pushing outward, that's tough. And it's also tough if you get a lot of praise, but it's not for the things that you want to put forth. You know what I mean? You need, you need both. Irene sent me five questions. What is something you've never done but always wanted to try? I have never done moto camping. Some combination of putting my plein air stuff on my motorcycle and doing like a little trip, painting outside, riding my, my bike, I think would be really cool. I've never done anything like that. Two, what place anywhere in the world would you like to go? I would love to go to Mexico. I kind of have a random interest in Mongolia. Something about their landscape seems really special. It's either gotta have a really cool landscape or art and architecture for me to investigate, and then I'll go. Sign me up. What is your favorite food? Meat. Most kinds of meat. A steak. Roast. Tacos, pulled pork. Oh, I also really love watermelon. Do you have a favorite art film? A film about an artist, painter, or painting? Unfortunately, I've seen like a few art films and I didn't love them. Like there's one about William Turner and I was so excited for it and was just kind of disappointed. I don't know. But if they count, I did like The Monument Men, which references art pieces. Um, very good movie. Oh, and then there's the TV series White Collar. I don't know if you consider it an art show, but it's about an ex-con man who's a really great painter helping the FBI to solve high-profile cases about missing art pieces. And uh, I like it. I like, I like the vibe of it. <laughs> I'm hoping these harden just a little bit. I want to try one. The last question from Irene was, if you could pick, would you be an elf, dwarf, or hobbit? I'd be an elf. I don't know, something about my face, I'm leaning towards elf. I also think they're just really smart and magical and elegant. I would love to hear more about your journey to learn art, courses, degrees, self-teaching. It sounds like you have fascinating mix of varied experiences. Oh boy. I have a degree, Bachelor's of Fine Arts, focused in industrial design. Along with that, I've taken two plein air painting courses that focus heavily on color mixing and technique overall. The teacher for that is very technique based. And I took the same teacher for an independent study course, which is where I kind of rooted my work in a process that I liked. And then the rest is self-teaching. From books, YouTube videos, analyzing other artists' work, experimenting, trying things out, reflecting a lot. It is a very mixed experience, which I think is a good way to go about it, frankly. Last question. Do you regret not going into art sooner instead of doing design? To tell you the truth, yes. I think pretty often about the fact that if my four years in school had been focused on painting, that I would be miles ahead right now. I wouldn't have stumbled so much in understanding how to believe in what I'm doing and comprehending how fine art really works. I wouldn't have gone through such a rocky period where I switched from design to art. That was a little bit rough and it really was like a full year of figuring out this is not working <laughs> and this is what I want to do instead and getting into it. It's frustrating anytime you realize that you were on the wrong path a little bit. I think we need to test a cookie. Not bad. I think it's getting even better. Oh, we nailed it. This was a very talkative experience compared to usual. I liked answering your questions. Actually, I had a lot of fun just reading them as you guys wrote them over the last two weeks. It's really fun to see where your curiosities lie. If you enjoyed this, let me know. That's all. I'm gonna wait for the rest of these cookies to bake. 